Hey yo, what's going on? What's goody good, gang? Hey yo, we back with another video, man. And I told y'all that that Domodashi video had me lost as hell. So, putting a little spotlight on a smaller YouTube channel, but they're bigger than me. But uh, we're going to be reacting to one of the videos from Bookish Theories. I believe that's the name of the... Yep, Bookish Theories, and I'm going to subscribe right now while I'm at it. So, they have released a explanation video of Domodashi, and it says the hero's journey. So, I guess it's a little more explained into it. And let me go ahead and... Uh, oh, let me pause that. I'm going to go ahead and play this video out because it's an ad right here. But, yeah, so they've just released a... Uh, let me fix it a little bit. Uh, explanation video, so... We're going to tune into that, man, and see what that video is talking about. Because, as I said, that video had a lot of meaning behind it. So, to get an explanation, thank you very much, Bookish Theories. We're going to see what we're tuning into today. But, before we do, you already know, activate. Let's go, let's go. Tomodachi to see how the song fits into the concept of right place wrong person. Co-written and co-produced by Rem himself, Tomodachi is a collaboration with British rapper Little Sims and it's sang in English, Korean as well as Japanese. The title of the song is a romanization of the Japanese word that means friend and the track itself talks about people that one consider friends but at the same time end up being very toxic additions to your life. These friends that Rem is singing about are the type of friends that one doesn't wish on their worst enemies. They're controlling, fake, but but also motivated by self-interest. Now, in regards to who this song is about, this is up for interpretation at this point, because Arem himself did not give any additional information about it. Like the other tracks in this album, Domodachi seems to have been inspired by real events in Arem's life. When listening to it, even Jimin thought that it felt like a musical diary that Namjoon created to get some things off his chest. If we take a look at the lyrics, for instance, it would seem that these Domodachi are actual individuals that he had around in his everyday life. People in a circle, maybe, or at the very least, people trying to get into his circle in order to gain status from this friendship. Whoever this Domodachi might be, they want to gain power, attention, they want to control him, but Arem is aware of their intentions, so he's not having it. The okay, so now, I knew I wasn't tripping when I watched the video. That creepy eye. Okay, now it's an explanation of what, so basically that eye was like, basically Arem being aware of everything that's going on, and now I'm getting an explanation of why I'm seeing like a young RM running through the crowd of everybody partying and everything else. So the partying is supposed to be the influences and the bad people that you don't want to basically influence you on your path to wherever you're trying to reach. So now I'm starting to get it a little bit. The experimental nature of the track now, also gives off an idea of dissonance though. here. It highlights the fact that these friends are acting like the opposite of a friend. And in the lyrics you have a RM calling out these people, while at the same time the chorus insists that we're all friends and we should all dance together. I think that the style of the song and the contrasting lyrics are meant to accentuate the contradictory nature of this relationship, maybe even the hypocrisy of these so-called friends. As a sound, Domodachi is definitely more unconventional compared to the others. It might take a couple of listens to fully figure out what's going on, but... Or oh, my take on it, I think it could be his... Him saying that we are all friends as dance could be his confusion because, say, take yourself, you may go through, you have a friend that you know is bad for you, but at the same time, they may be a good person, inside and you know it's just something that you know is good with them and you just don't let them go so at the end of the day you may still party and dance with them but at the end of the day you know they're not good for for you so i don't know that's my take on it also but the more you listen to it the more you catch details that you didn't catch before it's a process really like the one that you have to go through in order to figure out that your friends aren't really your friends and the fact that the song is in three different languages also adds to this effect now in the video this confusing and dissonant feel is portrayed with a surreal journey into a maze like tano directed by Pernaki, domodachi is the third video out of the album that follows the theme of the maze 
Japanese. According to the press release, if you watch the videos back to back, you'll be able to understand the album even more, and this is actually very true. While each video had their own style, they all portrayed the lostness of Aram, his out of placeness, not only when it comes to the outside world, but also within himself. As we already discussed in my last video, the album is very much a story of cycles. It's a journey full of contradictions because the person that made this journey is a contradictory person himself. As he tries to make sense of the maze of his existence, there's no right or wrong direction to follow. So now, I realized that I was supposed to actually watch these videos from actually... What's well, done is done. I've already done, watched them in all kind of orders. I'm going to have to go through and actually try to watch them in chronological order now. Now that I'm watching this video and seeing that there's actually an order to it because whatever destination he wants <laughs> to reach Ill, always seems the wrong one when he reaches it. An example that Namjoon himself gave for instance is stability. Once you have it you want to wander and when you start wandering you want to be stable again. In the same way the three labyrinths that we see in the videos portray endless search for an exit that doesn't really exist. You cannot escape who you are but you can learn to know yourself by exploring your own maze. Very simply put, if you learn to navigate the labyrinth of your identity, you can then better face the twists and turns of the labyrinth of your life. And if we compare the three mazes of the videos, I think that they all kind of represent different sides of the very same problem. The maze in Come Back to Me, for instance, focuses a lot on one's relationship with the outside world and its expectations. In Lost, the focus is on one's relationship with the inner world and one's own identity, but in Domodachi, I think that we're getting a mix of both. Here, the inner maze and the outer maze come together in a surreal exploration of Namjoon lived experience. We are presented with a dreamlike scenario which is claustrophobic, suffocating, even scary at times, and even if the protagonist is led to the exit, he eventually goes back in. Now to me the video can be interpreted as a metaphorical journey through Namjoon's unusual life, and the structure of the story is actually very similar to the hero's journey, which is a very common trope in world fiction. BTS already used this monomyth several times in their videos, but maybe the best example Hero's journey. The hero's journey, the hero's journey. Why does that sound so familiar? I swear somebody just sent me something that was something on some anime that had something to do with this. I don't know if it was Black Clover. Why does that resonate with me so strongly? I'm sorry. The hero's journey. of this is the fairy tale that we saw back in Make It Right. Much like Domodachi and the album itself, the hero's journey has a cyclical structure. The hero leaves the comfort of his reality because he experiences a call for adventure, and this calling leads him on a journey that will change him forever. After crossing a border to the unknown, the hero undergoes a series of challenges with the aid of an helper. These challenges slowly transform him until we get to the point of no return, an abyss which marks the death of his past self and the rebirth of his new identity. As the helper aids the hero throughout this journey that transforms him, the hero eventually completes his mission and goes back home, but at this point home no longer feels like home. The journey changed the hero, he no longer fits the role that he used to have before leaving, so the only answer at this point is to live again towards the unknown. Now this is obviously an oversimplified summary of the hero's journey, but even from this little outline you can see the similarities with Domodachi. At the beginning we see two children backing down the road, one of which is played by Kana Osawa, the protagonist of this story. We can see that he's playing Namjoon himself, the hero, and much like in reality, the character encounters music very early on in his life. The presence of the musician overlaps with the hero's call for adventure. This is the calling that leads the protagonist to begin his journey, but as he and his friend continue down this path, a man suddenly stops the other child from moving forward. The man tells the other child to turn back around, to change his mind, and while the kid follows these instructions, the protagonist continues down this path by himself. Right after that, this can be seen as a great representation of Namjoon's youth. He discovered music as a young boy, which is what prompts him to embark on this journey to fulfill his dream, but while his friend left his path under the advice of the adults, he continued to pursue his goal no matter what. As the boy enters the tunnel, in fact, the road is blocked. This is not an easy path to take, and the signs, the barriers and the sirens all signal that maybe it's not a safe road either. This right here is the threshold that marks the limit between what is known and what is unknown. For the hero to begin his transformation, he must cross this border and enter this strange world full of challenge 
changes and this is exactly what happens in the video. Here the protagonist befriends their children. These are some of the Domodachi encounters on this journey but these are not real friends. They are not the helper the hero needs in his adventure, if anything they are more like the first challenge to overcome because they try to distract him from his goal. Despite of that however, the boy eventually runs back without them. He made his choice, overcame the first temptation to abandon the mission and eventually moves forward even without them. At this point of the video we see that in the tunnel there is a traffic jam. The people in the car cannot move and all of a sudden the boy is surrounded by adults pointing in different directions. In the hero's journey this is another task to overcome, but if you look at this as a ram's journey this can also be seen as a metaphor for people trying to influence him at the beginning of his career. As we know idols are very young when they enter the industry and all around them there's adults telling them they know best and advising them to take whatever path they want them to take. It's very easy to trust the wrong person at this stage of their career, but in the video the boy is saved by another kid leading him to safety. This other boy is the helper here, the true friend of the hero. He's the Sam to the Frodo, the donkey to the Shrek, a companion that aids the hero throughout his journey. The boy helps him throughout this turbulent path and even if the two boys have to crawl in a small space they eventually manage to avoid the chaos happening in the tunnel. Another challenge is complete, but when they get to the other side the boy is confronted with a long line of people waiting for their turn. These people are waiting for their chance to get on the train that leads to their destination. In the video we see that there are different trains going in different directions, so not everybody is waiting for the same train. When you enter adulthood everybody tries to get on their train so to speak. Everybody tries to find their path and fulfill their ambitions, but what's- Wow, this is a lot to take in from this video. If you go back I'm gonna attach the reaction video to the end of this video. Go back and watch my reaction and you're going to see, before I even watched this explanation video, I felt how deep this video was and I could not get it, but my mind was getting it and I could not get what was going on with me. And now I'm getting a better understanding and like, it's easier said than me actually saying that, yo, I understood it the first time, but I just didn't have the words to say because it was so deep, but... I don't know, man. This is this this and shout outs to Bookish Theories for the explanation, man. She is killing it right now. Some people manage to get in, others miss this train and have to watch it live without them. Our protagonist, however, is successful. He manages to get on the train, but this train is even messier than the road he had to take to get there. Once again, this can be seen as a metaphor for RM's experience in the industry, and why the musicians are there. At this point, he's on the train, he's on the right track, but this success doesn't make life easier. It's a struggle to make space for himself in such a busy place, and it's also very easy to disappear in the sea of people going in the very same direction. This scene is very claustrophobic and confusing and our protagonist is yet again the only child among an ocean of adults. This can be interpreted in different ways at this point of the journey. On the one hand it can signify that Namjoon had to grow up too fast and become an adult sooner than most. Another possibility however is that this image is related to how he feels rather than what's really happening. The character being a kid could be a reflection of Namjoon feeling like a kid while getting swallowed by competitive and chaotic industry. Even in the process of achieving their destination there's no rest for the people in the train. There's no stability in the wandering and things are about to get even worse oh. as we get closer to- So another explanation that I think it may be as of him being a kid is trapped in the train because in the industry itself you got to realize as a kid you're going to be managed and it's going to be a whole bunch of grown people that's going to be telling you this what to do it's going to be trying to tell you where to go this way and different things like that so it could also be an explanation of him being a kid being told by so many grown people what to do concert um dressing eating because you got to also understand what south korean culture like they got a real strict like diet real strict like a lot of things are strict when it comes to being an idol when it comes to like their side of their culture with that so that could also be a part two. That's just my explanation. So.
to the point of no return, things become more and more difficult. All of a sudden, in fact, the conductor slams the brakes and the train is forced to a stop in the middle of the tunnel. This is because the railway has been destroyed by the sudden appearance of a monster blocking the way, and even if we can only see the giant eye of this beast, that's enough to freak everybody out. Now, the appearance yeah, of this yeah, monster yeah, is very interesting here, out. especially considering the maze concept. The imagery of the monster in the labyrinth has a lot of mythical connotations. It recalls the, the minotaur at the center of the maze, right? The creature that the hero has to slay in order to fulfill their purpose. This is the abyss to confront, the point of no return, which is also an imagery used by friend of the channel Carl Jung. As I mentioned in my video about Lost, in fact, according to Jung, the maze can be seen as a symbol of the unconscious, so the monster in the maze is our biggest fears, our shadow, which we must confront before resurfacing from the underworld of ourselves. As we learned from the map of the Soul series, confronting the shadow is one of the most important aspects of self-growth, and Arem as a singer has been confronting this shadow for a long time now. In the past there was even a time where he identified himself as the monster, but in right place one person he no longer does. Oh, I just caught another concept of what it could have been. So, just like she said, now that scene with them all being on the train, now what if that could have just been them all trying to run away from their problems, run all the way from like the stresses. That's why if you also look, they all were like looking around nervous. You got some people that's playing. What if they were actually trying to run away from their problems and the monster block away because no matter what you do, you're going to eventually have to face the problems head up. Like no matter what, like what she said, the fear, the doubt, whatever it is, you're eventually going to have to face it straight up. So what if that also could have been a concept. I'm A. I'm telling you. In Nuts, for instance, the song ends by admitting that the monster wasn't him, and granted, the context of that song is different, but the overall point stays the same. Part of the healing process this album represents is for Aram to let go some negativity, to get some things off his chest, but also to overcome moments of darkness that he went through in the past. In the video, we don't see the boy killing the monster, but maybe it's because this is a monster that doesn't require to be killed, but only acknowledged. In this hero's journey, it's fittingly the friend, the Domodachi that saves the hero. Hero. That one true friend is the one snatching him away from the monster, the one that saves him from his own darkness, but also the one that finds the exit to this maze. As the hero comes back to the surface and escapes the abyss, the childhood friend is there waiting for him. They can finally go home now, but at this point the boy is no longer the same. The journey in the labyrinth has changed the hero, so even if he knows how chaotic it is, he decides to dive back into the unknown rather than staying into a unknown that doesn't fit him anymore. If at the beginning he was the wrong person in the right place, place, by the end is the right person in the wrong place. There's a shift in perspective here, which is why he decides to leave. This is all I have for you today, but let me know what you think in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, <laughs> please think about liking and subscribing. As always, thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you next time, bye bye! Oh babe, this is adorable, I'll see you next time, so <laughs> but Yo, big shout outs because of the fact that I'm gonna be real with you. As I told you before, I connect with a lot of things with Ariama. We're getting the explanation. I told you again, that's why I was getting goosebumps from watching that video. So, the end of that video is definitely an explanation to me. Like, basically, when you go through a certain amount of challenges and different things in life, when you are faced with the task to go back to a easy point or an easy position in life you don't want to because you're used to that challenge so now you want to face more challenges now you want to be challenged more to become better and i don't want to say it's become addicting but to be able to overcome your fears and overcome them challenges man it does become addicting man because it makes you feel good success is an addiction man and basically the end of that video basically just proved that he was able to make it through the labyrinth the labyrinth and he became addicted to the success, man, and went to do it again, man. But at the end of the day, he's going to go through there and he's going to come back out smarter than what he did going into it. Dang, that, I, that video was deep. I knew it was deep. I knew it was deep. I knew it was deep, man. But big shout outs again to Bookish Theories for the explanation video, man, on this right here. We're going to get ready to wrap this video up, man. Hope everyone is having a great day, man. If it's not, hope it becomes better before the end. Remember when you wake up, you got a reason to smile. You got a reason to live and keep going. Stay strong and stay blessed. Never stressed, everybody. We out.